Okay, good morning uh, nations, good morning cities, good morning um, uh, churches, good morning leaders, and good morning um, believers and all my friends. I want to welcome you this morning in the precious name of Jesus. Um, I want to welcome our Skype family. I want to welcome our um, Twitter friends. And I want to welcome all people that are joining us this morning. If you're joining us for the very first time, I want to welcome you. I can see uh, Mr. India Tlungwane is in this morning. Uh, welcome Chiwera Innocentia. Um, I want to welcome all of you this morning and um, uh, it's my privilege to and, and honor to come to you this morning Musa. Welcome, you've been very consistent you know all these days that we are bringing teachings. Um, I want you to send my message to Prophet Rex and tell him that we are waiting for him to bring a live teaching on uh, uh, death in the pot so he, he has been very quiet and uh, missing out on um, some of these live teachings but uh, we bless him a good friend of mine thank you friends for joining us and uh, our whatsapp family uh, from the groups of our local church uh, which we're part of i want to welcome all of you as well and this morning is my privilege to talk to you and to offer prayers and to, uh, you know, um, exhort you in the Lord and comfort you and communicate to you the heart of the Lord this morning. My prayer is that um, God should um, continue to, uh, you know, stretch his hand towards your family and everything that concerns you. Uchilo, welcome. And by the way, Uchilo, I'm playing um the the, the 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 sound that you guys you created last night uh with your husband um the sound which you are hearing at the background uh, is the sound that your husband created last night so thank you so very much for joining this morning and i'm really loving um and, and the kind of work you guys have done last night in terms of preparing uh, the background sound so we'll be um just doing warm-up as a warm-up session and after uh, the warm-up session, we'll then um, get into what I started last night. And a lot of you are very much interested in us continuing on the issues of music in the local church. We will, um, we will come back and deal with that um, uh, probably maybe in the afternoon or some other time during the week. But um, it is one teaching that we will expand further and develop further. I just gave a little bit of intro uh, with, the, with, with, with regard to sound music in the context of the local church and what our prophetic uh, um, vessels in the local church within the, the, the space and sphere of music should be doing. And um, I want to talk this morning um, about some issues that, uh, that that relates to revival. Before I read my scriptures, one thing that I need to um, before I read my scriptures, one thing that I need to indicate. Number one is that uh, revival um, does not, you know, associate itself with uh, prayerlessness. In other words, every place where there is prayerlessness, there won't be revival. Every church, every region, every nation, every city that is, you know, suffering from suffering from prayerlessness, 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 um, there won't be revival in that space. In other words, revival and a person who doesn't pray and a church that detached itself from prayer, that particular region, that particular setup will not experience revival. By the way, when we talk about revival, we are not talking about tent meetings. We are not talking about, uh, you know, conferences. We are revival is, is is bigger than tent meetings. Revival is 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 beyond laughing. Revival is beyond singing. Revival is beyond you know playing strings on your Roland keyboard. You know, revival is 
bigger and greater than that. Uh, basically, you know, revival is the consistent flow of the Spirit of the Lord that continues to give life to the church and establishing the church in the specific agenda. So when there's revival, there is consistent flow of the Spirit of God and then at the same time, there is a particular and a specific agenda that God wants to achieve, you know, in His church and He wants to establish His church in a particular agenda in his purposes and plan so revival is is basically uh, uh, welcome ramlili uh, thank you for the sound that you created for us last night uh, basically revival is 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 not falling under the power revival is not tent meetings revival is the life giving spirit of god that is consistently flowing uh, you know, you know, in the city, in the region, in the church, in the life of an individual, to establish us in a particular agenda. When there's a revival, there is a particular agenda that God wants to establish. That wants that God wants to establish the church and bring the church into. From Nairobi, welcome, uh, um, and my sister Queenie, welcome. Uh, from Nairobi, uh, so revival is 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 basically the consistent flow of God's spirit, the spirit of the Lord that breathes life to 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 to, uh, to the area in the church, to the area in the believer where there is death or where there was death or lack of no no you know, no life. So revival is basically God breathing into the church his spirit and 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 bring about the life of the spirit into the church and consistently flow into that for quite a while you know for quite a period of time revival has nothing to do with uh, you know conferences revival has nothing it might uh, spark out and break out in a particular setting but revival is not conferences and 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 so that is important because revival is also bigger and greater than you know emotional excitement as much as revival can spark you know you know emotions and excitement but revival is not excitement revival is not emotions uh, and, and 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 that's very important for us to capture uh, because revival does not come to entertain um, uh, uh, the, the, the soul of, of, of a man. Revival comes to establish the church of God in a particular agenda. Revival comes in to establish you in, in, in a particular agenda that God is having for the church and for the individual. So we, we're going to look at Jacob, we're going to look at Joseph, we're going to look at the, the dynamics of revival, you know, you know, in the times of Jacob uh, where Joseph was involved what 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 are the principles and the lessons that we can glean from from the relationship of Jacob and Joseph together with the brothers in the context of revival that's what we we'll look at but one of the most important principles that we need to glean or know about revival is that revival and prayerlessness do not mix Revival and prayer laziness do not mix. If we are lazy in prayer, if we are not prepared to watch just for an hour, if we are not prepared to go into the upper room. By the way, when you want to know dynamics of revival, you've got to study the book of Acts, not, not, not from chapter 2, but from chapter 1. When you study the book of Acts from chapter 1, you will start to understand the things that needs to be in place before an outbreak in Acts chapter 2. Because the Bible tells us that in Acts chapter 1 that this group of 120 apostolic leaders this apostolic community they were in a place of prayer in the upper room they were in a place of prayer revival does not break out when there is no prayer revival does not break out when we are still you know under the yoke of gluttony actually revival and gluttony do not mix if we are if we are not controlling our appetites if we are not controlling our physical appetites, the things that our bodies are drawn and attracted to, there will not be revival. If we are unable to control our emotional appetites, if we are unable to suppress, you know, you know, our emotional appetites, we, we will not have revival. By the way, one of the things that I need to say about revival, listen to me, is that revival is al always started by God. God is the one that starts revival. And when God starts revival, revival is killed 
by us. In other words, we are the ones that kill revival. God is the one that sparks it. God is the one that starts it. Our human nature is the one that will go out to kill revival or enhance it. So, so, so we also need to learn dynamics of sustaining revival. If revival has been birthed by prayer, revival will be sustained by prayer. What has been birthed out of prayer will need to be sustained by prayer. What has been birthed out of prayer needs prayer to continue. So the, 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 the leaders and, 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 and everybody who, who is part of the group that is, you know, you know, you know, in the forefront of revival, they must master the art of prayer. They must master the art of prayer that unlocks revival. They must master the art of prayer that sustains revival, that sustains revival. When Jacob was blessing his son, Joseph, he blessed him with two blessings. In, in one of the blessings that Jacob gave to his son, Joseph, was the blessing of the breast and the blessing of the womb. The blessing of the breast and the blessing of the womb. In other words, there is an aspect that is needed from apostolic leaders to, to be able to birth revival. But at the same time, the same people who birth revival must know how to nurse revival, must know how to sustain revival. Revival needs to be sustained. If, if, if God is going to cause revival to be birthed, there has to be a group of people who know how to sustain revival. There has to be people who know how to sustain it and contain it. If we can't sustain revival and contain it, we will lose what God is doing in our time. If we do not know how to sustain revival, we will lose what God is doing in our time. So if, if revival has been birthed, you know, has been birthed out of the womb, if revival has been birthed out of the womb of prayer, revival will need the breast, you know, you know, you know, of the same people, spiritual breasts. In other was prayers that sustains it teachings that sustains it lifestyle that sustains it we've got to know how to sustain revival so when god birth things out of prayer there must also be breast prayers that sustains what god has birthed in our life genesis 49 verse 25 says this by the god of your father who will help you and by the almighty who will bless you with the blessing of heaven above with the blessing of the deep that lies beneath. The, 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 the second part that I need is this, of the blessing that Jacob was conferring to his son Joseph. He says, the blessing of the breast and of the womb, the ability to birth things and the ability to sustain things, the ability to start things and the ability to sustain it. Joseph carried this dimension. Joseph carried these elements, the aspect of birthing things. You know, a lot of times it's easy to start things. A lot of times it's easy to to start you know activities to start things and and to, to just to get get it running initially get just to have it you know you know rose from nothing and have it moving but it's also very difficult to sustain things when the blessing of the breast is not upon us perhaps let me stick on this just you know for this session and then we'll get into other aspects of revival later it is critical it is important ladies and gentlemen that when you be when you carry the ability to start things the empowerment from god to start things you must also you know receive the empowerment from god to sustain things a lot of things have been started and fade on the way a lot of you know activities a lot of businesses have been started and fade along the way a lot of spiritual exercises have been started and fade along the way a lot of physical exercises and a life of you know life of fitness you know have been started we have started that but we were unable to sustain it we have started ministries but we a lot of times we are unable to sustain it. It's easy to start things. It's easy to start things, but it's costly to maintain. It's costly to sustain. My prayer this morning is this, is that may Jehovah give you the blessing of the womb, the ability to birth things, the ability to start things, the ability to pioneer things, the ability to start things from scratch, and also the ability to sustain the things you have started, the ability to sustain the things you have started. Don't just 
just start the church. Let there be grace to sustain it. Don't just start businesses. Let there be grace to sustain it. Let us not just have revival. Let us not just have revival. Let us also become apostolic leaders who carry the ability to sustain revival. Revival is started by God and is killed by us because a lot of times we lack the ability to sustain what God has started. We lack the ability to sustain what God has sparked out of our lives. So my prayer is that may the Lord give you the blessing that was upon Joseph, the blessing to start things, the blessing to pioneer things, the blessing to birth things. You will not you will not fail to birth things. You will not you lack the ability and the empowerment to start things, but you will also have the ability to sustain things. You will also have the ability to carry it through. We, we, we pray in the precious name of Jesus. We pray in the precious name of Jesus that when revival breaks out in your city, when revival break out in the upper room, the people that were in the upper room carried the ability to sustain that revival. That's why even today we are still, you know, we are, we are, we are the legacy of that revival. We are the legacy of that revival because there has been an ability that was that that set upon the church to 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 carry and to sustain what God has started. We will not we will not go very far in in the dimensions that God is opening in our cities, in our nations, in our churches, in our individual lives. If we lack the ability to sustain what God has given us, if we lack the ability to sustain the move of God, there has to be people who know how to sustain the move of God. We have to know how to sustain the fire at the altar. In the Old Testament, we are told that fire at the altar must be kept burning. Fire at the altar must be kept burning. What keeps the fire burning at the altar all the time is wood. What keeps the fire burning at the altar all the time is wood. So wood is a picture of prayer. Wood is a picture of, of dimensions that are able to sustain. So in other words, if you want more fire, there must be more wood. If you want more fire, there must be more prayers. So prayer is the sustainer. Prayer is the wood of revival. Prayer is the wood of revival. There can't be revival if there is no wood of revival. So prayer is the wood of revival. I'm very much worried, you know, about how we mock these dimensions that will be able to sustain what God has started in our midst. Because if, if we fail to capture these, we will lose what God is opening up for us. If you fail to capture what God has started and what God has birthed in your midst and sustain it with divine dimensions that have been given for that, we will lose what God is doing. I pray for the blessing of Joseph to come upon you, the blessing of the womb and the blessing of the breast, the ability to start things and the ability to sustain things, the ability to start things and the ability to sustain it, the ability to birth things and the ability to sustain, the ability to nest. The breast is also for nursing. The breast is also for nursing. By the way, it is out of the breast that we get the milk. It is out of the breast that we get the milk. In other words, we need to have the grace to nurse what God has started in our midst and grow it to a certain level and grow it to a new dimension and grow it to a new place. When God sparked things in your life, when God began things in your life, when God gives you the ability to begin things, there must be the grace to sustain these kind of things that God has opened up for you. And when the Lord gives you this grace, you will grow anointing, you will grow revival, you will grow dimensions of grace, you will grow grow it to a level of you know to, to its fullness sometimes we are failing to come to the fullness of what God has opened for us because we lack the breast to be able to grow these things and see it coming to you know to 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 to, to fruition and see it coming to its greatness and see it coming see it coming to its greater levels there is a place in God where there must be progressive flow of milk that sustains what we have birthed. The, 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 the breast releases the progressive milk to nurse and sustain what has been birthed. 
press releases progressive truth that sustains the church until we come, listen to this, until we come to the fullness, until we come to the greatness, until we come to the fullest level and the highest level and point or peak of what God has always intended us to come to. Let this dimension of milk come upon the church. Not just I'm not, when when I'm talking about milk, I'm not just talking about you know the elementary aspects or the fundamental aspects or the essential or the basic aspects of the truth. But I'm referring to progressive dimension of revelation that sustains, that maintains, that grows, that nurses the move of God in the church. That nurses what God has birthed for us in the church. What God what God has allowed us to birth in the church. It takes the breath, the blessing of the breath to sustain. It takes the blessing of the womb to birth. These are two aspects that I'm praying for you this morning in the precious name of Jesus. Let, let, let this grace come upon us. The ability to start things and the ability to sustain them. The ability to grow things. The ability to nest them. The ability to be progressively releasing what is needed to keep it going, to keep it moving, to keep it flowing, to keep it advancing in the precious name of Jesus. Revival need people like Joseph. Revival need people like Joseph who carry the ability to birth things, the ability to sustain things. I pray for you this morning in the precious name of Jesus. Let this grace sit upon you. Let this grace sit upon you as a leader. Let this grace sit upon you as, a, as an entrepreneur. Let this grace sit upon you as a spiritual leader, as a family, just as a family. There are things that you are supposed to start. After this lockdown, I see you as a family beginning to start things and also carry the ability to sustain them and the, the energy the same energy we have when we start things is the same energy that is needed to sustain things in the precious name of Jesus. Genesis 49, 25 is your portion. The blessing of the breast, the blessing of the womb, the blessing to birth and the blessing to sustain, the, ble the blessing to start and the blessing to grow things, the blessing to start and the blessing to, 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 to nurse and grow things. We will begin to see things being sustained. We will not see, you know, companies being opened and all of a sudden they fade on the way. We will not see, you know, you know businesses starting and all along the way we lose interest because God is putting upon you the grace to sustain what you will begin to start. God is putting upon you the grace to sustain things. The energy that you heard initially, the, the, the dimensions that you heard initially, that spark energy, you know, you know, to start things and to birth things, God will put upon you this, the, 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 the same energy to sustain things. What has been started by prayer need to be sustained by prayer. What has been started by, you know, by the word has to be sustained by the word. What has been started by the prophetic must be sustained by the prophetic. What has been started by lies will need to be sustained by lies. You can't start by lies and all of a sudden now want to bring the aspect of the truth along the way. It's important that we also need to know how to start things and start them right. If we start by, you know, by lies and corruption, we will need to be lying all the way in order to sustain things. But that's not what we are encouraging you to do. We are encouraging you to start right. We are encouraging you to start accurately. We are encouraging you to start things in prayer and carry that dimension of prayer throughout. We are encouraging what has been birthed by prayer. Samuel. Samuel was, was birthed out of the womb of prayer. And when you study scripture, you will discover that Samuel is one of the greatest Old Testament, you know, you know, you know, you know, intercessors. The man that comes out of the womb of prayer is sustained his opportunity operations, sustained his functions on earth, sustained his ministry by prayer. What has been started by prayer must be sustained by prayer. We, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm saying this and I want to close that let us not go to prayer as an aspect, as a dimension of, re, of, of responding to crisis and also, you know, cooling down some fires here and there. Prayer has to become our lifestyle because prayer is the breast that sustains and grow revival. Revival needs to be unfolding progressively. Revival needs to be unfolding progressively. And for that to happen, we have to have a breast that is progressively releasing sustaining dimensions. Let the grace 
to sustain things sit upon you. The grace to sustain ministries. The grace to sustain corporations. The grace to sustain companies. The grace to sustain spiritual activities. The same energy we heard on the 31st of December has to be the same energy that we carry throughout the year. We can't be responsive to issues. We can't, you know, I'm, I'm very much against the issue of us now wanting to go into the closet of prayer because there is a crisis. Prayer should not be used as a tool to respond to, to you know, to, to, to a crisis. Prayer should be our lifestyle. Fasting should be our lifestyle. As a matter of fact, the ministry of the apostolic church in, in the book of Acts was sustained by the aspects of prayer, was sustained by doctrine, was sustained by doctrine. So I pray for every apostolic leader who is watching me this morning that God will give you their breast to sustain the church doctrinally. You will carry the aspect of progressive revelation, progressive breast to nurse and to grow the church to greater heights, to nurse and to advance the church to greater heights. It takes Genesis 25, Genesis 49 verse 25 to experience what I'm talking about. Jacob said to Joseph, let the blessing, the blessing of the breast sit upon you. Let the blessing of the womb sit upon you. The ability to start things and the ability to sustain things. I pray that the revival that has broken out right now on social media, the church needs to have the ability to, 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 to sustain this revival. There's a great move of God that is broken out of social media. We are flooding social media with the truth. We are flooding the social media with the word. There is a need now to sustain this, to become consistent in this, to become consistent in this, to become consistent in this. Consistency is the blessing of the breast. Consistency is the blessing of the breast. It is the ability to sustain what you have started consistently. The Lord bless you so much. I love you. And uh, I will be coming back, you know, just now by 10 to 10, by 10 minutes to 10. I will be coming back to do my other session, the last session of the morning. And in the afternoon, we will come back and do the other sessions of the afternoon. But the blessing of the breast is upon you the ability to sustain revival the ability to sustain revival revival must be sustained wood is the sustainer of revival let there be more and more and more wood that is gathered in our cities that is gathered in our churches to sustain what god has started for us let there be wood wisdom wisdom also is is, is also the wood that sustain what god has birthed for us there is a need also for having consistent flow of wisdom that will flow progressively to sustain the church we cannot birth things and fail to sustain them the blessing of the womb must go together with the blessing of the breast god bless you i love you in jesus name